this is just for me. So I could write stories in the book. Oh, okay. Interrogated. And then Kira and Elise, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, here with head coach Angela Spoya, Kira Slavic, and Elise McKinney. Mm -hmm from the women's volleyball team, going to do the 2023 season preview press conference. Um, let's kick it off. Yes, go. Just what are you looking for in the first two tournaments of the season coming off of a rough year last year? Just what do you hope to see in the first impressions of the 2023 team? Um, okay, first of all, I want to change the, the verbiage for a rough year last year. I think uh, we got hired very late, and so we spent the year uh, in, in terms of wins and losses, I think it sounds like it would be rough, but we spent the year getting everybody on the same page and getting, you know, kind of sifting through our roster and making sure that the people that were here were dedicated to the team and had the same vision and the mission as the coaches. And we did that in the spring. We, we had three kids come in in the spring to help us. One of them was Kira. And then we um, have added eight new bodies past that. So 11 total new from last year. So in the beginning of the, this season, we're really looking forward um, to playing and getting everybody on the same page. And in those first eight matches that we're going to do in the preseason in Alaska and Denver, uh, we're hoping that we can come back with a definite starting lineup um, just to see what everybody can bring to the table in competition, you know, outside of our four walls. And uh, we know that that's really important. By the time we get back here, we need to be ready to go because we're going to start our CCAA conference. And how do you see the new bodies, I guess, new players uh, coming in? You said that you added some in the spring. How much have they played together? Like, how many weeks of practice have you had? So, Division Two is a little bit different than what I'm used to at the Division One level. We um, start very late, and so we we don't have a big preseason. So we've basically got about two weeks to get everybody ready. Um, it's it's only two two practices a day for five days. And so normally we have that for a good like three weeks to a month. Um, so it's it's very condensed and we have to get everybody ready pretty quick. Um, but I think the tournaments are really gonna help us get to the point we need to be. Right now, again, we're just getting everybody on the same page. This is the defense we run. This is what we wanna see, you know, who's playing what position, those kind of things. So integrating the new people into that. Uh, last year we were short on attackers. Uh, we did a really good job cleaning up our defense and um, and our so receive, I think. Um, but we couldn't terminate when we needed to. So uh, we brought in a lot of a lot of big guns this year. Um, I mean, aside from even last season, I think one thing is this is a program. Um, you know, one winning winning record, which was in 2014, mm -hmm. since they joined the CCA. So I think a lot of, you know, it's been a struggle trying to do different, and you know, um, different ten years of different coaches. You know, it's been a challenge definitely to, to try and build up volleyball here. I mean, how much do you? I don't want to say maybe take into that, but when thinking about the challenge of trying to build a winning culture, um, how do you kind of take that into account as far as really trying? Yeah, you know, just trying to change the culture as far as what's been in the last fifteen years. Well, the first thing you need to do when you're changing a culture is get the right people, right? You have to recruit, and you have to recruit hard. I think when um, when I, you know, took the job, I kind of knew what I was getting into. I feel very confident in my recruiting skills. So you have to bring in the right people, and um, and then you have to get them to buy into your vision and mission, right? Um, along with the vision and the mission of the school and the athletics department. So I think that that's what we spent this year doing. I think we spent this year doing that. I, I know this program gen generally hasn't been uh, great, but I also think that they were funded for the second half, if not the last place team in the conference, and we are no longer funded that low. I think that with the, again, with the new players that we have, we should make a definite impact right off the bat. Um, maybe a follow-up to that point. Obviously, you're a recruiting coordinator during your time in Eastern Washington before taking over, and it seems like there is, you know, I know you. I, I looked a little bit at the recruiting class, but definitely, I think it seems like you've leveraged, you know, your experience in the Pacific Northwest um, and, and in that those areas to, to bring in talent. Um, is that something that I guess was, you know, obviously California has a rich volleyball section, but I think that it's interesting that that was sort of a new approach that you took of of, of just owning that area and bringing in players from that area. Um, I mean, I guess. Could you speak to that? Could you speak to the type of culture you kind of build and, and how you, 
know, bring in players from that area and, and bring it in uh, to Humboldt? Well, I think that I have a probably a bigger name, obviously, in the Pacific Northwest because I've spent over 25 years coaching up there. And so um, I have a lot of connections with coaches and club coaches and high school coaches. And so I thought it was really important to get some of those kids down here. Also, you know, California, yeah, has a great volleyball population, but a lot of California kids probably don't want to be this far north. Um, a lot of them do like to stay in California, but when you say California, they're thinking, you know, sun, fun, beach volleyball. Um, and Arcata looks like where I came from. It looks like the Pacific Northwest, right? It looks just like Washington State. So um, you kind of have to let you know those kids know too because it, it can be when you're recruiting it can be if you get somebody from you know Hawaii and they're like I like tropical and hot heat all the time those kids aren't going to stay here if they're if they don't know what they're coming into mm -hmm. so um I do think my strength is is recruiting out of Washington and Oregon and parts of Idaho uh, just because that's what I've done for a long time you know Utah the pretty much the Louis states um and haven't recruited a lot out of California. And I think that will come as well when we start winning more. Um, I think that a lot of the California kids, they see our record and they shy away from that um, unless they want to build something. And that's what we talked to these kids about and the California kids we did get. Do you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself? That's the first question we ask. Because we need people here that are going to buy into this program and are going to dedicate, you know, and give their give their soul and their blood to it to help get us to where we need to be. And if you're that type of person, you like to work hard and you you like the way that sounds, jump in. But we've had people shy away from that and say that's not what I'm looking for. So, would you say that's how you landed Kira, or could you guys both do this? Is it Kira or is it Kyra? Kira? All right, cool. Mm -hmm. uh, is that how you landed up at this program, or what it was appealing? About Cal Poly Humboldt to you? Well, I gotta say one thing before she starts. I We really needed a setter. I said we had problem terminating last year. A lot of that was the, we had three setters. Two of them were hurt for most of the season. Um, so it it created, you know, a, not a great offense. And so we were do recruiting and we were looking for freshman setters coming in. And I looked over at my assistant coach Haley one day and I said, why can't just a 5'10, 5'11 transfer setter email me and just come down and help us build this program. I need somebody who has a lot of experience so that I can spend my time elsewhere, right? I was looking for somebody that had leadership and who could take people and say, this is what you've, you've, you're doing wrong. You know, they, work, they go into the gym an hour early every day before the coaches get there. And so I needed someone to oversee that also, like be able to set and, you know, and watch what the other setters were doing. And that night I got an email from Kira, and I opened my computer and I yelled for Haley and I said, no way, you're not gonna believe this. So then I emailed her back and said, can we get on the phone tomorrow? So then. Yeah, I think coming, like I came from Wyoming, so that was, we were we were pretty good, I would say for the Mountain West, it was a really hard and tough conference. Um, and I was done with volleyball, so in 2022 I was, I graduated and I just was done. I had two years left um, because of COVID and a medical, so wasn't really planning on going back. I had a full-time job. I was kind of in the real world. And then I thought, like, I have another opportunity. Like, I have two years left. I might as well just use it and see where it goes. Um, so I went back in the transfer portal. And when I was talking to Angie and Haley just about the program itself, obviously you see the record and you're like, okay, well, I don't know. Um, because I just didn't come from that. And I, I like to win. I'm a winner. Like, I don't like to lose. Um, but just the vision that they had and what the girls were also bought into, that's something that really... I don't know, striked me as being like it's just something that would be fun to be a part of, and I I want to make this a winning program. Um, I'm only here for two years, so do my best and try to make everyone around me like bought in as well. But I think right now with the new people, especially who are coming in and who are here now, I think we have a completely like, bought in program, and I think it'll be fun. I'm excited. When Kira's on the court, and you're gonna see this, she makes everybody better. She gives 110 percent every practice. She holds people accountable on the court. She um, runs the offense, she's comfortable. Um, so that's what you're gonna see when you see your play. It kind of said all it's up to you, Kara. Uh, I mean, how, how do you feel like, you mentioned the Mountain West and the difficulty of that experience. How do you feel like, um, you know, you've gone about maybe taking your experience uh, from Wyoming, it was Ohio too before that. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, these two, two, two schools that compete, um, you know, at higher levels at, at that level of competition, how do you try and take those lessons and impart them on, you know, your teammates here? 
Um, so I haven't actually been in the full season here, so I don't I don't know. I mean, the spring um, definitely just seeing like glimpses of like Chico. We played them. Um, I think it's just we can run it faster here. Um, they I haven't seen obviously the other tempos of the other teams, but I think my experience at Wyoming and especially Ohio, we had a timer like it was 0.1 seconds. It was from my hands to the hitter's hands, and they went. So just trying to get on the same page as far as like speed with all of the hitters. I think we've been working on that right now. So I think as we keep working on it, as the middles get more comfortable, as the right size, outsize, and whatnot, um, I think it'll be really good and hard to stop. I mean, I even in the Mountain West, if someone was going really fast, I remember Utah State, they were very fast, and it was hard. Like, the blockers, it was just really hard to play them. So I think if we can get on that level, especially for our conference, I think we'll be in a good spot. And for you, Elise, uh, this is your third season at uh, Cal Poly Humble, or slash HSU, of course. Uh, can you just describe the transformation of the program in your time here? Yeah, it's been a complete turnaround. I'm so thankful I get to be a part of this for my senior season. Like, I think we're going to make big strides this year. And, like, having Kira as a new addition, like, all of the new girls, like, they really are bought into this program. And I'm really excited to see, like, the outcome of the season. And did you change positions last season, or is that something that you're doing between seasons? Um, I changed positions when I got here. I was a middle, but I'm just too short for the so I got to the right side, but yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> for sure. Um, a quick question for you, Elise. I just, what kind of, for, for speaking from your perspective as someone who's here, um, you know, through new tenure, new staff, what kind of resilience does it take for players who have been here through this whole process, this whole transformation? Um, what is that like for you, maybe your teammates who have been around kind of for that entire process? Um, just falling back on our teammates and seeing like the vision that Ange and Haley have for us, like we're really, we're really there. Like we really want to make improvements and seeing the struggles we've had last season, like we're over losing. We obviously want to win, so we're, we're in, like we're ready to go and we're making like big improvements. Um, I do have, I guess, I think we're here in the end. We're good, we're, we have about four minutes, we're fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, nevertheless, one question I think kind of bring it towards the end. Um, this first slate of games up in Alaska, really high level, very challenging level of competition. I mean, it'll culminate with Anchorage, which was an NCAA tournament team, but I think Fairbanks and Upper Iowa, 